Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney. I'm your art Sherpa, and today I want to do something completely fun and different. I want to show you how to draw a grumpy, adorable owl. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is Sherpa tracking today, and basically what that means is we have several cameras to make sure that you can see every part of the process so that you're not missing out on anything that will help you be able to do this. I want to say to you right now that you can do this. Drawing is just a skill. It is one of many, 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 many skills that an artist can have. It's completely learnable. Everybody can pick it up. Um, I've seen again and again over the years lots of people who were sure they could only draw a stick figure. And I think my favorite line is, I can't even draw a straight line. Hmm. Yeah. Which is actually really hard to do. Yeah. Really, only architects draw straight lines. So if you're not drawing a straight line, you're in fantastic company. Grumpy Owl is a great project to start with. This is also for a painting, the Grumpy Owl painting. So if you wanted to draw this in and then do the painting, this is the perfect thing for you. You can see it here on the table. Let's see here. On the table. Oops. There. There he is on the there table. Is. Isn't he adorable? This is what I'm going to be showing later. And this is what we're going to learn to draw. Our materials are really simple. You just need a pad of paper, right, and pencils. And just a quick thought on this. Pencils come in hardnesses, which you can see right here, like HB. That's your traditional yellow pencil, like what you have in school. And 2B, that's a softer pencil. That means the lead will come off easier. It has less of the binder in it, and so it'll make a darker mark. I even have my 9000 Jumbo 6B. This pencil's so soft, it's barely a pencil. And then I have this Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. All of these things I'm going to put in the description below, down there, materials and all that sort of information. And if you are excited about any of these, you can go check them out. But listen, this is just drawing. Drawing doesn't need to be fancy or particular. It just has got to be fun. So let's get into drawing our owl. And I'm going to get to explain this to you guys really, really well. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the things when you're drawing I want you to think about as a new person who is drawing is think about the space on all this white space. Mm -hmm. Not about how much it freaks you out. Okay. Don't think about that. That's not going to help you. <laughs> Empty space is just fine. But I want you to think about where the top and the bottom and the sides of the paper are because sometimes what happens to people who are new in art is that they'll overcrowd themselves to the top or the bottom of the paper. Okay. So one of the tricks that you can do is to create a guide mark. I'm going to take three fingers down right here mm -hmm. and here. And these are what I call my breaks. This keeps me from taking my drawing some crazy place I don't mean for it to go. I'm not saying you can never go off the page. I'm just saying if you go off the page, you're going to want... Okay, i got to know when you're changing. <laughs> I'm on you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> All I want to say is that go off the page when you want to go off the page, but not wandering off when you don't mean to go. So that's your breaks. That's where you know your stuff is. And the first thing that you're going to want to think about your owl is that he's very round. So one thing you can do to help yourself is give yourself a nice big round circle, right? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I see new artists doing is they draw like much narrower than they mean to with their owls. They get what I like to call cockroaches because <laughs> they do this. But I just want you to practice making a fat circle. These lines should be light, right? And I'm using a very light pressure and I actually am resting my hand on the paper. Okay. Or canvas is what it is. But then you know where this is, right? So you're like, okay, he needs to be closer to this fat than this fat. <laughs> and that's going to help you because sometimes when you're new, that's one of the things that can get to you. Now his head, right? Yeah. It's a little bit like a bump on the top of his body. And so if you make a little mountain or just a little rounder point up here, that can help you, right? Notice how I'm not like particularly worried if I'm making lines again. I'm making these sort of lines over and over again. Yeah, right? no, wh what is that? Why do you what do that? What that is about is that I'm adjusting and I'm allowing myself to adjust and make lines. Sometimes when we're drawing, we want everything to be perfect. We want all this white paper, right? Yeah. And then we don't want any mess and we don't want any, anything showing where we're working it out. But actually when you're learning to draw, you really need to have these little sketch marks 
these yeah. little lines where you're making adjustments. This is your brain doing some very important work. So go ahead and allow for that. Huh. Now I'm going to kind of finish around here, around his little body. I'm saying, oh, this is very round, and I like round. Round is very cute in owls. If you're trying to draw something very cute, a round shape will help you. Hmm. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line kind of down my center here. See that? It's yeah. the center guideline. And then I'm going to come across the top of the head, and I'm going to make another guideline. And I like to curve this down. See, I'm sort of curving it down. Yeah. That's going to help me place my eyes on an even line. Right? So I know that I'm going to have eyes, and they're going to be kind of on this line on each side. And I just want to make sure I've got a nice even curve. And I'm making adjustments as I'm going. So I'm like, oh, I'm liking what I'm seeing there. Now, this center line is where the beak is. So right below where this little X is, I'm just going to make a nice little line down. See that there? Just a nice little line down. Yeah. I'm going to come over about a quarter of an inch, pinky width. I'm going to come over like a pinky width and make a little guide mark. And I'm going to make these little downward U's. They're kind of like these little U's. You can make a U. See, in drawing, if you can write the alphabet, you can pretty much draw anything. That's something people don't really know. Once you've mastered writing, you've mastered your skills for drawing. All you have to do is get your brain to access those skills here. Okay. I'm going to make you explain that a little bit more because I can, I can write the alphabet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure I can't draw. <laughs> That's because you're trying to draw the entire thing at once. And what people do when they're actually rendering is they break it down into small bits. Like if I'm breaking down the beak, this is a long downward facing triangle. If I'm breaking down the eye, this is like a smile or a U shape. I know I want it to be bigger than a silver dollar because bigger eyes are funnier and enjoyable, right? So for his grumpiness, I know I want these to be bigger. And you can already see from this line how it's implying a grumpiness. Huh, yeah. But one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to make an upward curved lid. So I'm going to come down here at a point. I'm going to come up, arc down a little bit, and fling up, kind of like an eyeliner. Oh, yeah. Right? And I'm going to go try to do the same thing on the other side. Now, something you should know about, and this is just true for most of us, we will be right side or left side dominant when we draw. That's mm -hmm. not the same thing as being right or left-handed. Okay. Right side dominant or left side dominant means we'll have a side of the picture we have an easier time doing. And we have a harder time getting the opposite side. Oh, okay. That's normal, and it shouldn't stress you out. Okay. I think sometimes if you know you're normal, like you're just like, okay, well, I can handle it. So now we've got this sort of downward little facing turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come and make my lid. I'm going to car car carve my lid. <laughs> carve it up. Curve my lid up. Curve it up. I'm going to sort of follow this lid line here. I'm going to use it as a guide. And there I go. That's how I'm making this lid. Right? Curving it up. Right there. Then I know I'm going to want some kind of lid eye space to come down here. And so I'm going to draw that down here. Because he's grumpy, he's going to have some dark circles under his eyes. Now the yeah. wings are going to be really, really easy. These are real simple wings. So all I'm going to do is just bring a line out and in. It's like a parenthesis. Bring a line out and in. And then for feet, feet are so simple. They're just like a little curve with a smaller little toe. Look how its toe bends into there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to curve the opposite way, though, to be funny. These little things in drawing can sometimes add a lot of humor to what you're doing. Under these lids here, yeah. I'm going to add the pupils. And I'm going to make them large. These would be large pupils, right? Large pupils. Now, if I'm drawing this on a canvas, I'm going to want to use a watercolor pencil so it disappears because graphite will stain through the paint. Okay. And the next thing I can do, like if I just want to color this, I can take my black pen 
and use my guidelines to make the determination of my finishing line. Oh, yeah. Right? Then I can come back with an eraser and clean everything up pretty easily. Something for new artists and especially young artists, which we like to call on the channel little brushes. Please don't start the drawing, get frustrated, crumple up the drawing and throw it away. Yeah. Because here's the deal. Whatever you're going through in your art, you have to complete the journey. It's a weird deal about art, but it's something over the years I've found to be true. So if you're starting a drawing or an idea and you're thinking it's starting to maybe not go the way you want it to, the inclination is to crumple up, throw away and start again. But that's actually stalling your progress. What you want to do is push through, finish the idea and then try again. That's how you're going to really grow in your art. Yeah, that makes sense. Does it? Yeah, because yeah, if you stop and you crumple it up and throw it away, you stay stuck where you had a problem. It's amazing. It's like a roadblock, and you definitely want to remove all roadblocks in your art. Huh, yeah. So I'm going to just add this here, right? And then, you know, he's going to be real easy to clean up with a good eraser, and then I could color him. I could watercolor him. I could do anything I wanted to. Now that I've got him sort of sketched in, you know, and you could make your own coloring pages this way. This is grumpy out. I'm kind of wondering um, what everybody would like to learn to draw next. I've got in my iCard, mm -hmm. I've got in the iCard a link to the painting if you want to do the painting that goes with this owl. And I have a voting card. You tell me what you want to draw, in, draw next. So I've got an eye. And a cute owl and a mouse. Ooh, that's Ooh. cool. This is really handy. Is this handy? Yeah. I'm going to try to do these to go with the painting lessons. Yep. That, that totally so makes that sense. So that you guys that are really trying to draw have this extra information here. And you can do that really easily. Now, I want to show you real fast the canvas we're doing later today. Okay. And then we're going to go. All right. And I'm going to see you hopefully to paint it. So let me put him right here. Ooh. Okay. So you just pre-sketch that in there. I pre-sketch that in, right? But he, on for this painting, if you look at this painting right here, he takes up most of the canvas. So I actually have to start him at the top and stop him at the bottom. Wow, yeah. So he when does. you're sketching him in, the, the break line that you have is at the top, and then the break line you have at the bottom is about four fingers up. Gotcha. So he takes up that entire thing. He does. He takes up that entire thing. And when I'm sketching my little wonderful branch here, I'm coming from three fingers over. I'm bringing this little branch up. I'm coming up. I'm making this little branch. I have a little twiggy off here. And we remember a thing about keeping them at all kind of benty and wobbly and thin. And I'm bringing it down there. Points out. Point across here. Coming down. So that's how much space I need for my weird branch. Totally makes sense. Right? So the thing on the branch is remember your branch needs to be thicker over here as you're drawing it in. I may even sketch it in with a darker thing, so I'm going to sketch it back in. Right? Try to create unevenness and crookedness in this driftwood. Driftwood tends to be crookedy. So you can see how I go up and then I kind of wander my line down. And then I break out this branch, and it's sort of at an upward angle, and I pull it down and back in. But then I shoot this little bit of the broken wood over and come in, back out and over. And then I'm trying to make sure that the thickness here is greater than the thickness here. Break off another little piece of wood here, and then it thickens out and goes off the thing. And that's how I, and I'll give him his little feet, that's how I get him on his little branch in his world. So just remember your break is here, your breaks are here. Make sure he's wide, that he doesn't go too cockroach on you because if you get him too skinny, he's going to look like a cockroach. And then we only want to do that when we're trying to draw a cockroach. Yeah. So check the eye card. Um, tell me what you want to draw next. You can also tell me in the comments. If you're like, I'm not into anything in the eye card, tell me in the comments what you'd like to do. And we'll try to do these sketch outs every painting so you guys that want to cover more of the drawing part of it we can talk about those processes a little bit more i want to see you at the easel in just a few minutes okay bye bye bye, -bye.